So one of the problems that you get in a vertical windmill is the uh, power takeoff. But I'll talk about that secondary to the fact. The primary problem that you have is that you have a balancing issue, and uh, meaning that you have an object that's sticking up here, spinning this way, and it produces a gyroscopic production, meaning that if you want to keep it from trying to tear itself apart, you'd spin one clockwise and one counterclockwise, and they would balance out the gyroscopic effect of wanting to bend this way or this way or whatever it does. But to go to a large one, where you, so their blades are very small. The energy density, the formula for force on a blade, I, there's a couple three. The one that I use, and it works well with me, I did a wind tunnel thing, and yes, it matches up great to it. So force to me is the air density times the speed of the wind squared times the surface area in square feet times the drag coefficient of it. And we'll use the drag coefficient as one. You can change out, some people say one half row and they use cube the wind and all that, but you're talking about the same thing. I replace that air density with the constant with 0.0031. The formula originally calls for 0.00256. And the reason I use 0.0031 is because that's what I measured. When people give you these things, this is one of the things you learn along the way of learning, is that you do not know under what conditions they derive that. Was that at sea level at a certain pressure? Was that at zero degrees? Was that laboratory measurements controlled? I'm out here in the real world. So I want measurements that relate to my 86 degrees and sunshiny day and, and things this nature. So I went out and took real measurements and, and drove down the highway with a, a drag chute to measure it. And uh, I was able to correlate exactly with the formulas, but I had to ooch up the air density just a little bit. Not a big thing, but I wanted to confirm that these numbers that I'm given work. Well, first thing I confirmed was the formula is a good formula. Second thing I confirmed was they didn't match my atmospheric conditions. And so that is the case with the density altitude. Density altitude is varying out there every minute. What, what you go out and test right now will not be there a minute from now or 10 minutes from now or whatever. So everything you talk about, you take a snapshot and you freeze everything and say, okay, if this was the case, what would be the results? Next would be what are the low ends of that case and what are the high ends of that case based on the movement of air density and pressure altitude and so on and so forth. And so that's the way you go about things. I don't like doing three decimal points on things because it makes the people think it's very accurate. Nah, it's not accurate, come on. You know, how can something be accurate that something is moving tremendously? The wind speed is moving, the density is moving, everything is moving. So uh, I have a tendency to want to do what I call the first order of magnitude of thinking. I don't want to get down so deep in the minutia of things that you get lost in it because you're starting to believe these terrible numbers that you're producing. So in the case of of this air density thing and the formulas. Uh, we're getting going to get back to why vertical windmills and horizontal mill differ and why the horizontal windmill right, uh, today is the best windmill out there. It's, I don't think it's the best windmill tomorrow. I think that the innovations that I have done in the vertical windmill is going to be a quantum leap in technology and I do believe it'll be the windmill of the future. There will still be needs for horizontal windmills, but I think the vertical windmill is going to take its so place. The, so the vertical windmill, like, sounds like the we say the number one issue with it is the, the force that's being exerted. And so you one way to equalize that is with a gyro effect. What other what other what well, other limitations are there of a vertical windmill? That's I'd like to go ahead and expand that on that one first okay, right. because that's, that doesn't take care of the problem. Okay. The, as I mentioned to you, the blades on a vertical windmill are quite small. They don't have a lot of surface area. And, you, and part of the formula is, and why I gave you the formula, was to tell you it's the surface area squared of the blade that has the effect uh, on this uh, windmill, how much energy you're going to produce from it. 
The problem you have is if you took a blade and made it a reasonable length instead of two foot blade, okay, I can deal with two feet. I can put a rod out there stiff enough to hold two feet, provided it doesn't have a lot of push on it. Well, if it doesn't have a lot of push, you don't have a lot of energy. So, hey, what have you achieved? What really you need is something that stabilizes that windmill. My, my laboratory model that I make, and mine is not what a lot of people think. They think you'd make one that produces a lot of wind and energy and things. And no, when I'm researching things, that's not important to me. But my laboratory model right now is 80 foot in diameter. And this is small for me, uh, uh, which is, means a 40 foot wing on it. For, uh, on it. for me, uh, a realistic windmill to produce large amounts of energies at very low air speeds means it must have a wing from 75 to 200 feet in length. So you get 200 feet on each side and you're out here trying to balance it this way. Mm -hmm. You know, depending on, no, that's not gonna happen because you have to have these guide bars in across the top of it that have to go out 150, 200 feet to connect to something else that's taller that can sit there and hold it in position. So that is a major restriction to uh, vertical windmills. They have no ability to stabilize themselves. Mm -hmm. Large vertical windmills for collecting large amounts of energy. And that pretty much blows everyone out of the water right there. The second problem with all windmills, horizontal, vertical, doesn't matter, is the power takeoff. In the horizontal windmills, they have one shaft up there, I'm, I'm guessing it's gonna be, uh, depending on the, the, how many megawatts it is, but from four inches to 10 inches in diameter, steel shaft going through this thing, cause all this torque has to be put into that shaft that's gonna turn a train transmission, that's gonna turn a, a generator alternator, what are they gonna do? But it's one long train of events there. And if you try to turn that vertical, you can do the same thing. You can put your generator at the bottom. You can have everything turn it. But to me, that's a major limitation. One of the nice things about vertical windmills is, is all that stuff you had up here at, who knows, nosebleed level, is going to turn over and it's going to be down on the ground now. So you no longer have height. So there's a tremendous amount of advantages to this. So I see the single axle that the horizontal windmill has to use can be thrown away. My one that I make today, my prototype, has no axle in it. 